little kid, they always tell you the boogeyman's gonna get you, and you're supposed to be scared. I always had a fantasy or a dream that the boogeyman came, and he's like riding on this black stallion, and he comes to my window, and he comes to get me, and I jump on the horse with him, and like I wrap my arms around his waist, and I get up under his cape, and we fly away. There I was at a high school dance in 1964. Looked across a proverbial crowded room to see this handsome stranger who'd never uh, appeared at our high school before. Six foot two, eyes of blue, the white tux jacket, the blue ruffles shirt, and the, you know, he was gorgeous. One thing led to another, and he became my steady boyfriend for a year. His name was John Schaefer. We wouldn't go on a lot of normal kind of teenage dates. He liked graveyards. He would speculate about the dead people and, you know, what it was like to be dead and what did they look like now and on and on and on. At times, um, we'd make love there. You know, it wasn't anything macabre about it to me at that time. It was just a, another remote place outdoors where we liked to uh, make love. He was a nice kid, came from a well-to-do family, the yacht club set, the debutante set, all the social graces. He went to Catholic school and was just an awfully nice guy. My parents took him with us on our vacation. I remember when my grandmother was knitting, he would hold his hands up to let her wrap the yarn around his hands. Everyone in my family just loved him. He was as nice as he could be. Actually, he was too nice. He began to tell me of some problems that he had, um, some uncontrollable desires to want to kill women. People tell you things all the time, and I really had never heard anyone uh, say anything like that or, or talk to me the way he did. One night, we were out in his front yard, and he pointed out the window of a house two doors down, and he told me about the girl that lived there. He said that she would undress in the window at him and flaunt her body at him. And the mixture of emotions that I saw in his eyes that day was arousal and anger. And this is something I've never seen. Normally, when a guy is telling about being able to see a girl undress, you'll see him happy, excited, you know, oh, check this out, she undresses, you know, I get to watch her, you know. And uh, it wasn't that at all. He was very angry and disturbed, and he said, what a slut, you know, and he said, uh, I'll put a stop to that. I was just a kid. I was not a therapist. My feeling is just like, I'm not here to do therapy, dude, you know. You're on your own with this. It was cutting into my good time, basically. Subsequent to that, I didn't have anything to do with Schaefer. He did call me up. He had been stalking me after I broke up with him. He called up to tell me he was waiting outside and watching me with my new boyfriend. You mark your words. He said, I'll get you back. And I thought he meant that, you know, um, I would be his girlfriend again. But later on, I wondered, you know, what does he mean, I'll get you back? It was nine years before uh, the headlines hit. Two women dead and 28 to 30 dead and missing girls. The bodies of Georgia Jessup, age 16, and Susan Place, 17, were found in thick brush on the east coast of Florida. They were decapitated and mutilated. Gerard Schaefer was sentenced to two life terms for those murders, but he says he didn't do it. He has been diagnosed as a sexual deviant and erotic sadist, someone for whom they say murder is no longer enough. You can call me whatever you want to call me, but let's see some evidence. They performed a search at his mother's house in Fort Lauderdale. There was a room in the back, 
John and I had uh, had sex there several times. When the police searched it, they went in the closet and found a number of boxes. You had hundreds of pages of writings, photographs uh, from magazines where he would take a picture of a woman and jab holes in the picture. There was a gold tooth, trophies of his victims. There were some jewelry items, IDs, divorce papers, items of an extremely personal nature. The little locket with the fleur de lis and the name embroidered on it, Lee. The name of the girl that he had pointed out and said, I'm going to put a stop to that. At that particular time, I had a career as a business writer, writing computer manuals and so forth and begin to look around and say, is this all there is? If I do this really well, I'll get to do this for the rest of my life, okay? I'll get to write more computer manuals until death do us part. At this time, Ted Bundy was executed, and there was a great deal of media attention on death row, execution, serial killers. And I read the book by Anne Rule about her relationship with Ted Bundy, and I said to myself, shoot, I says, I can do this. She thinks she had a relationship. Boy, I have a lot more of a relationship than that. So I wrote to Schaefer February 8th, 1989, and said, I'm a writer now. Do you remember me? And would you like to do a book? I don't have any inner compulsion or fascination with the morbid. I knew a serial killer up close. I wanted to understand it. How is it possible to know someone so very well and for them to have a life of secret violence at the same time? How can someone be just as nice as they can be and you can see them and know them day in and day out? and then find out that all that time they were living another life, something completely different, violence, sex, 